uh, we uh, got really good results. Our infection rates went uh, from higher 12s uh, for organ space down to less than 6. So it was a dramatic decrease drop and which was also statistically significant. We went back and looked at everything out there in terms of what measurements we can implement and, and what can, we can do to reduce the surgical site infections. Uh, for that, uh, certainly we look, look, look out for uh, evidence-based data. We uh, put these in a writing and we had meetings with, uh, with, within our group, uh, with, uh, uh, with care coordinators, with nurses, with the nursing management, and as well as all our partners, we, all the physicians. So uh, it's important to be inclusive to, rather than exclusive, and everyone was on board. Uh, we believed in it, and then we, uh, we implemented our bundle. Uh, IV antibiotic prophylaxis, which is perioperative IV antibiotics, and that's typically in our practice given certainly within one hour of the incision. So that we used to do it with Unison, Ampicillin Sulbactam, which we switched that to Ceftriaxone based on our culture surveys and, and after, you know, based on the identified most commonly grown uh, bacteria or bugs in the, in, the, in the cultures within the last six months prior making that change. And uh, specifically speaking, Enterobacter was very, very uh, resistant to the current antibiotic or prior antibiotic we were using, which is the uh, ampicillin and sol solbactam, whereas other antibiotics in that uh, uh, Petri dish was much more effective, uh, which was ceftriaxone was one of them. And after discuss, discussing with our uh, head of the uh, infection prevention uh, uh, doctors, we decided to go with ceftriaxone. Additionally, there were other advantages, such as uh, 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 having no need for redosing the antibiotics, the uh, ceftriaxone, whereas we were uh, we, we had to redose Unison, for example, in in our cases, and that would also uh, decrease the compliance and possibly increase our infection rates. Uh, with uh, with introduction of the ceftriaxone also, we uh, introduced Flagyl to our protocol. When the patients come to see us uh, in the colorectal uh, clinics, it, as part of their pre-op visit, we give them, uh, we hand them actually, a bottle of uh, chlorohexidine shampoos that they take home with, and, and also we give them a piece of paper that uh, is uh, filled with the instructions, very specific instructions, how they need to do it and when they need to do it, and, uh, and that which includes the night before, taking a shower, putting new clean clothing on, or PJs, and then next morning, again, taking a shower, clean uh, towels, drying up, and then putting new clean uh, clothing on. It, it's, it's spelled out very nicely in these hands out, and this is what they follow. There have been uh, robust data out there uh, indicating that with the me mechanical bowel preparation, adding an oral antibiotics, which is neomycin and flagyl in our practice, what we use routinely twice a day, is certainly a very effective. And the data is strongly uh, recommends that, strongly supports that. And that also was the evidence that we, uh, we, we follow at the time of in implementing this uh, bundle. And there was enough data to use that uh, as part of our bundle. Uh, bundle project, and uh, and with that, I think we did s observe a significant improvement uh, in our results. Bowel prep is a, actually a surgeon preference. Uh, typically, for for me, it's usually go lightly, but uh, you know we, we we can use any bowel prep basically. But certainly, a must is the oral antibiotics combining with the bowel prep, whatever bowel prep you are using. You know, as colorectal surgeons, you, uh, we all have to do a uh, digital rectal exam, even intraoperatively, which means we're putting our hands and fingers through the across the uh, legs and uh, and do a, a rectal exam. Certainly, each time, uh, you know, we need, when when this happens, we need to change our gloves, uh, even uh, put some sleeves on, uh, and also part of the bundle, we we made sure that uh, the the 
the entire gown and gloves are also changed after the anastomosis is created, meaning like if it's a colorectal anastomosis, certainly changed uh, gown and, and the gloves, or if the, it's a right-sided colon resection, uh, definitely changing the gloves as well as the gown is, is part of the bundle. Also, interoperative uh, uh, details of the operation is, of course, important. Uh, one of them is using wound protectors, as well as changing the suction tip and closing uh, instruments. Certainly, we uh, uh, prepare separate closing instruments, and they are not used throughout the entire case. And at the end of the case, these uh, closing trays are open, and they are used for the purpose of the closure, both at the fascial level as well as the skin level. Uh, as well as wound protectors throughout the uh, case, of course, is cr crucial to use. And there's also uh, uh, robust data out there uh, supporting the use of the, uh, the wound protectors. Additionally, at the closure, we certainly pay attention, and that is also part of our bundle, to uh, wash out the wound with uh, clean saline uh, and with a, using in a clean, clean aseptor. And at the same time, certainly the suction tip is changed. The, the suction tip that we uh, use throughout the case is certainly uh, uh, is not utilized at this stage of the case, and that's also part of the uh, practice and bundle uh, we, we implemented. We'll